they change into a different creature for those two years. <laughs> and you think they're never going to go back, but they do. All right. Well, I'm so excited for this upcoming season of Botched. I watched the first episode and already starting off with a bang. I mean, you said that this season is the most extreme ever. How so? We took on cases that the first seven seasons we wouldn't even consider. In fact, a lot of them were cases that we have seen before, but we thought the risks were too high. But we now have seven years, seasons of experience and training and our skill level has gotten so, so much more advanced that we took on extreme congenital deformities, traumatic deformities, and of course, plastic surgery complications. We had a lot of complications ourselves. We had a couple emergencies that you're gonna see. And uh, there's a lot of tears shed, even in the first episode. So I think this is a really emotional season and really, really rewarding to watch. Yeah, I mean, Dr. Tari, you, you get emotional in the first episode, like you said. It's, um, you know, you're, you get very emotional after the tummy tuck surgery. What was What was it about that particular surgery that really got to you? Well, when you have a really difficult advanced case, you of course get super focused and super emotionally invested, okay? You want to avoid complications. But that particular case, she had lost her husband and then she had a special relationship with her father that reminded me very much of my relationship with my daughter. So it really got to me that, you know, she said, uh, I'm my dad's mini me and my daughter is my mini me. And then I came out of this intense surgery and I sort of just like got lost in the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dr. Nassif, did that happen at all to you this season? Um, I cry a lot almost every year, um, you know, and um, not in the same way as him. But the point is interesting. I noticed that as soon as I had children, my whole sensitivity level just increased dramatically. Right. So I cry, but I don't know this year. I don't know, Dwight, Matt, do I cry this year <laughs> on any of the shows? Probably. I think, it's in. I think I, actually he's the emotional one this year, which is a great, you know, polar change in what we're used to doing. But one thing that I've done different on this season is one, um, or the show once got a new look. Mm -hmm. Two, we're going to involve the wives a little bit. So we're going to see a little bit of that and a little bit of a uh, sports competition where the loser gets to do something horrible. Um, we actually, I'm doing more complications or tissue that I know is going to fall apart. So it has to become a lot worse before it gets better. And usually it's more, his patients usually have that tissue issue. This year it's me. Yeah. So very complicated cases, very difficult. And again, every year as we excel, our surgical skill set dramatically increases. And right now we keep saying, okay, well, this is the best our skill set's ever been. But God willing, if this show goes on for a few more seasons, we'll just keep on going. And, you know, our goal is to, again, entertain, mm -hmm. help, and warn. And that's what we do with this. One of the things that makes this season very unique is that as a, if you don't include the gallons of Botox and filler that he had, he doesn't have any true surgical procedures. So that's a Yes, I actually, I do. A surgical I do. procedure? Yes, I have a small surgical procedure. Yes. All right, right. Something very important. Right. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Give it the joke. Go ahead. Do it. Okay. So th this season, they will allow him to actually swim, swim in, the in the ocean, ocean. because he's the plastic that he has is not going to necessarily choke the dolphin, dolphin the way it has. <laughs> have, you, have you ever been able to say that with a straight face? No. <laughs> no. Funniest joke. That's 156 rounds. I've heard up every time. <laughs> Is there <laughs> you know, you've done countless surgeries over the years. Is there one in particular that made you, I'm sure you get this question a lot, that made you the most nervous or was the most nerve wracking for you? He does a case this season that I think is not just the case of the season, it's probably the case of the series where there was a patient with a growing tumor who was taken to a major university in a foreign country. They opened it up, it bled so much they just closed it. We call that a peak and shriek. Mm -hmm. He took on this case, despite the fact that it had grown even larger, taking over this beautiful woman's face. You imagine living that life? And what you're gonna see is so dramatic and so life changing that if you can keep a dry eye, I'd be surprised. Yeah. Uh, what was that like for you, Dr. Nassif? 
um, intense. I mean, there was a lot of worry and stress. Um, and we always, by the way, we always have to have a little bit of that. I don't know. It's not being scared, mm. but it's being not fearful. But what is a good, I'm trying to think a good word where we know we have to be very cautious and we are worried. Mm -hmm. And this is a patient that I thought a lot of bad things could happen mm. in the uh, operative field and then also in the post-operative healing. Yeah. And um, there is some of that that occurs. And, uh, you know, we're we're cautious. And but at the same point, you know, our let me use this term. Our sphincter tone is increased dramatically with these procedures. Mm -hmm. And by the way, it's good when a sphincter tone increases because there's a lot less sort of gas that comes out of his rear end, which can be very devastating when you're in the operating room. There he goes. Right, you don't want to be around that. There's nowhere to run. <laughs> people, you know, people spend a lot of money. I think, you know, even in the first episode, we meet Fantasia, who I think has spent almost, you know, $250,000 or something like that to look a certain way. What's the most you have seen someone spend on plastic surgery? I mean, we've seen patients spend almost a million dollars on plastic surgery. I mean, Justin Jedlica, the, the human Ken doll, I think has had over 38 different kinds of implants. The implants alone are probably several hundred thousand dollars, but it's not unusual to see patients spend an incredible amount of money. But unfortunately, some of the patients that we see on Botch have not taken our advice. They continue to do so. And we've heard they've had some major major problems yeah. have you seen an increase or decrease in plastic surgery in the last few years you know obviously a lot of big body positivity movement lately and things like that so have you noticed a shift at all yeah we've seen a, a dramatic increase in all categories and all types of plastic surgery but that's about to explode these ozempic miracle type drugs are gonna change the very nature of plastic surgery because people are gonna lose a, very, a lot of weight very quickly. When you do that, you get a lot of skin laxity in your face and your body. So it's gonna change everything literally overnight. Yeah. You know, and it's a great example of that. I have a couple of friends, I'm in Orange County, mm -hmm. um, and these are women and they probably already, and we're not shaming them and we're against Ozempic shaming. Mm -hmm. um, we basically have said, uh, they, they've come to me and they're friends of mine, and they probably each have lost about 30 pounds. Yeah. And their neck and other parts of their body, they have excess skin. Mm -hmm. And they now feel good and they're exercising more because they needed something to boost to get them to lose that weight and they have. And they did use a semi-glutide. And um, so now what I'm seeing now more and more is more neck lifts, more of men wanting neck lifts, but more facial contouring from excess skin because of weight loss. And as time goes on, the more of these semi-glutides, maybe that, um, uh, you know, as long as you don't get as nauseated and being very careful about how you use them, we're gonna see more and more dramatic weight loss, I think. And for us, we feel that, you know, obesity is a disease. Um, the number one cause of cardiac disease called coronary artery disease, and that causes that, strokes, high blood pressure, hypertension, increases cancer, it, all kinds of negative things. So we're God willing going to see, you know, just with some of the other anti-aging uh, procedures and meds, medications that are out there, we feel God willing that this is going to be a good thing for everyone and it's here to stay as long as it's used properly and for the right reasons. Right. Well, that was kind of my question. Like, who should be using Ozempic? Why is this Why is this particular pill become such a craze? Because there have been weight loss pills around for so long. But like you said, it kind of has been coming hand in hand with some shaming and maybe people that are using that that shouldn't use it. I think we have to stop immediately the Ozempic shaming. It's mm -hmm. preventing us from sharing our experiences. Listen, we don't know how to use these miracle weight loss drugs in non-diabetics. Particularly, we don't know how to use them in patients who only have five to 20 pounds to right. lose. So we need to share our experiences. We're learning as the patients are learning what the side effects really are. A lot of people are ending up in the hospital. A lot of people are getting sicker than they've ever been before. So it's really important that we celebrate that we actually have a breakthrough in treating obesity. Mm -hmm. So. It's really an exciting time, but it's also a very scary time. It's going to change the very nature of our bodies 
and what's happening with our physiology. And it's a new frontier. It's exciting, but it's also very dangerous. So yes. share your experience. And if somebody's on Ozempic, talk to them about it and make them feel good about it. Yeah. But, you know, and the thing that you that we've heard before in the media is that there's a big shortage. So they're saying that the patients with diabetes or pre-diabetes, um, they don't have enough medication for them to take or the prices are going up. Mm -hmm. That may be true, obviously, because they've been around for a long time and that is original use of them. So there is that to consider. And we'll see if there will be multiple different types of these semi-glutides coming out. The second thing too, one thing that people should know about is you lose muscle mass also with it. Because mm -hmm. remember, you're not eating. Remember, you need that protein. You got to make sure you're doing it always the right way. And um, so no matter what, this is kind of the newest thing. And that's why it's not necessarily a botched thing. But we're just talking in general about giving information. No. A little bit that we know right now. Definitely. But, you know, you said that this is for ob obesity, but there have been some several people, several housewives that have come forward saying, you know, I've taken this to kind of kickstart it. They're clearly not obese. Should they not be taking it? I think anyone who wants to control their cravings, mm -hmm. who wants to lose a little bit of weight, it's even been shown to be useful for gambling addictions heroin addictions, alcohol addictions. This is a new time where we're able to control our cravings and get control of our behaviors. Mm -hmm. So whether somebody's critical about it or not, whether they like the fact that other people are using it or not, it's here, it's yeah. gonna happen, it's a good thing, but we need to learn how to use it. So mm -hmm. it, don't make people feel bad about it. It's going to be in the drinking water very soon. It's going to be as common or more common than Botox. And this is being studied at a very high level. There's articles written even last month in the New England Journal of Medicine using Monjaro in non-diabetics, and it's extraordinarily effective. In it's That article showed that in a year's time, patients lose 26% of their body weight very quickly. So it's effective. I think it's used properly. It's going to be safe. So celebrate it, enjoy it, and don't make people feel bad about it. No, I mean, it seems like this is a breakthrough drug. I mean, would you consider this, I guess, the new Botox? Like everybody's going to be using this? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It could be. And again, remember, there are the side effects. I mean, I have high hemoglobin A1C. Mm -hmm. pre-diabetic and this was years ago so i actually before everyone knew anything about the weight loss mm -hmm. um even though that was one of the things that says it will do on the uh, i couldn't handle it i took some like maybe a small amount and i was throwing up all the time and um now i i will tell you something anytime there's a new drug one thing just like botox for example they're using it for all kinds of different uses mm -hmm. from sweating to migraines all kinds of things um uh, back spasms and so with this, just like Dr. DeBro said, they're going to find, God willing, many positive and different uses for this. And of course, there'll be the negative ramifications, and that's how you learn about a drug. Listen, these ozempic type drugs aren't the new Botox. They're better. They're Botox, liposuction, breast augmentation, facelifts. Put it all together and you've got a drug that's not only making people look better and feel better, it's treating the number one risk factor for heart disease, diabetes, and cancer. So this is an incredibly powerful, positive thing that is truly the most significant, I think, medical breakthrough in history. That's a, that's a big statement. I'm, you know, that's, I, a, that's a huge statement. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I'm sure like I'm, ex I'm excited to learn more about it. Cause like you said, it's in the early stages and so many people are learning about it and it's good not to shame people because you know, everybody wants to get healthy and feel their best. Um, you know, circling back to the show, you guys have been doing this together for so many years. And sometimes, you know, when you're on reality TV, like, you know, sometimes it's the reality TV curse of relationships and friendships. What has made your friendship withstand the reality TV curse? <laughs> Despite the reality TV curse, we have remained together. <laughs> We're a married couple. We, you know, it's funny. You would think of doing eight seasons of super intense, life-saving, risky plastic surgery that people that, uh, you know, a couple would bicker, their relationships would have tough times. We've gotten better. I mean, I can only think of one or two arguments. They last two minutes and we let it go. 
We are sort of like, you know, vinegar and oil. Oil and vinegar. We're balsamic and all of them. Yeah, I mean, we, we, you put us together and you try to mix it. It doesn't necessarily, we're very different, mm -hmm. but it goes together so well. Our relationship is better than it ever has been. It's never been a problem. I mean, uh, if we weren't married, we might go there. I mean, look at him. He's looking pretty good these days. That plastic surgery is really good. It's really worked. You know, they said good genes are good docs. Mm -hmm. it's good docs, by the way, just so you know, in this case. But uh, we just, uh, I mean, we really literally love each other professionally and otherwise. I, I mean, that. we just have a really good time together. I love that. Paul, you said, you know, the wives are coming more on the show this season. What was that like for you? And how did you feel about opening up your family life again to reality TV? Well, remember, this is not like the old. No, way. it's not like housewives. Yeah, I mean, you know, but again, because this is based about the patients. Yeah, and about, of, course. of course. But bringing them on once in a while like that, and it gets up the kids. But it was fun, and actually, I would like to do a little bit more of that. You know, I think having Heather and Brittany together with us, mm -hmm. doing a little bit of a dinner, doing something funny, uh, of course, you know, and this will be a good one when you see this one. Cool. Um, I, I think it does add a little bit more depth in the show because. It shows us a little bit more mm -hmm. and because again, we feature, it's about the patients, but having a little bit more about us. I mean, you already see, you already see enough of him and Heather. So everyone knows that obviously on that other show in Orange County, but <laughs> uh, having you know a little bit about, this is nice for us to be together. Well, I think it's important to realize that, you know, we highlight the journey emotionally and physically the patients go through, but make no mistake. We're attached to the hip of these patients. Mm -hmm. We go through the same thing. Their complications are our complications, okay? And we take on giant risks mm -hmm. as the patients take on those risks. Yeah. So we have emotional journeys we go through and we go through them together. So I think it, it it's better for the show when you see some more of that kind of thing. Definitely. Dr. Nassif, is there anything you ever missed about Housewives? Mm. I, that that was a good pause on that one. <laughs> um, Did you enjoy hanging out with the husbands? You know what? So that the one part I was going to say is that was probably the only thing I enjoyed. Well, no, it brought a few things. Number one, free, hanging out with the guys, free meals at restaurants okay. that they would go to. Yeah, I but that food that. wasn't that great. I only have free good meals when I'm with you. Um, <laughs> two, it actually got us here where we are now. Because mm -hmm. if I wasn't on that show and I didn't have that executive producer, Alex and I, and, and we were talking, um, you know, who does the housewives, um, we want to be here right now. It's true. So it actually, it brought me here to be with this guy and to, you know, help all these people throughout the eight seasons. And we've been blessed. Yeah. So that's, so it's been a wonderful thing for me that wise. Look. And plus my social life, my love life. Listen, you know, Adrian and I are getting along very well. We're, you know, we're, we're I, mean, I probably talk to her right now, still about twice a day. Um, we get along very well. Listen, we are better off friends and parents mm -hmm. um, than husband and wife. And look how lucky, look where I'm at again. I'm married with a wonderful wife and I have a beautiful brand new baby, Brittany, who, I mean, uh, Paulina, who's almost going to be three. Yeah. So to me, it's done wonderful things. Definitely. Is uh, Paulina, is she in that terrible twos transitioning to the three-nager stage right now? Oh, uh, three-nager. I love that. Um, actually, first of all, he just saw her a few days ago. So cute. She is yeah. so wonderful. Such mm -hmm. a personality. She did have, she's are having a few of those little temper tantrums. She had one in the car the other day. Is coming home from ballet with uh, Brittany. Mm -hmm. And she threw her yogurt and got up, you know, upset. Oh. Uh -oh. and, um, so, but you know, Look, uh, it's let, happening. It's just, happening. Can I just tell you, this is your first girl. Wait till 14, 15. Yes. Right. <laughs> they change into a different creature for those two years. <laughs> and you think they're never going to go back, but they do. Just yeah. remember that. Right. right. Little kids, little problems, big kids, big problems. <laughs> you know, um, Dr. Ter uh, Terry, I spoke to some of the ladies from Real Housewives of uh, OC, and they said that, you know, by the end of the season, Heather kind of fi finds herself a little isolated from the group. Do you agree with that? And what kind of happened? And how did things shift for her this season? You know, I don't know why Heather seemed to get so isolated from the group. I know that Heather is one of the most caring, wonderful, unfortunately sensitive people you could ever meet but 
she's got so much love and so much absence of hate that it's unfortunate that she feels and felt isolated. Hopefully, as the season goes on, things mm-hmm. will get a little bit better and they've got some very serious things to work through at the reunion. But for example, with her and Tamara, they're in a tough spot. I know they've been texting and I can tell you something. There is a lot of at the base of their relationship. There's pure love. So I think there is a lot to work through but i'm hoping they can figure it out and go back to where they were because they are fundamentally really really nice people and really good friends yeah you know i know you sold your home in orange county you know bought a new house in beverly hills does this mean you may be stepping away from the real housewives of orange county would you want to do that and maybe should go um, to Beverly Hills. <laughs> I don't know that we're stepping away from anything. I know that I'm here to support my wife 100%. I mean, happy wife, happy yeah. life. It's just we, we do these real estate projects. We love them. Yeah. Uh, this is sort of Josh Altman's fault for bringing us okay. that, that guy who just swept our house from under us. My wife is a true real estate design genius. Okay. And this legendary, iconic Hollywood property She's more excited about this than I've ever seen in any any project. We tried to buy with Josh seven other projects that didn't work out, but this one did. And I think the universe is telling us maintain the Hollywood legendariness of it and wait till you see what Heather does it. And by the way, she's been doing it five days a week because we have to figure out all of the what we're doing to the site and the house and the tennis court and the new pickleball. So she's under a lot of stress that needs to be seen whether she does it on orange county or a separate show or both or none i don't know but it's fascinating i'm sure it's gonna be beautiful i'm sure no doubt about it and then uh dr nassif have you spoken with kyle or mauricio i don't know if you're still friends with them obviously there's some big news um of them kind of going through a rough patch in their relationship and what was kind of your reaction to that um i did reach out to um kyle um, you know, I just said, Hey, I'm here if you need me for anything. Um, obviously because I, you know, I, I, I love the two of them and, um, she actually was very, you know, appreciative and thankful and called me usual. Thank you, buttercup. That's what you used to call me on the housewives oh, back then. Buttercup. And, um, and, um, uh, when we see how, how busy he is, I know he was on uh, a few different podcasts, so mm-hmm. I've not spoken to him, spoken to him, but I was dealing with him a lot. You know, when I had my house up for sale. And I got to tell you, I never knew that they were going through a rough patch. And listen, I mean, I don't know what type of rough patch they were going through, are going through. I don't know any of that, but I got to tell you that since knowing them for a long time, especially back in the days of the beginning of Housewives, they, besides Lisa and Ken, have a very strong marriage together. And I feel that whatever the heck it is, I'm sure will be worked out because their bond and their girls and their family, I mean, you know, they're, they're, they're strong. They're going to work it out no matter what. I, I don't see that thing ending at all. For more news content and exclusive interviews, make sure to hit the sub, like, and bell button down below and visit usmagazine.com.